What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Brandon Blakeney, a.k.a. Brandon Lee TV. Welcome back to the Live with Brandon Blakeney podcast. Now, kick back, relax, and come take a ride with me. South Carolina notches another win under their belt and remain undefeated. Those first NCAA tournament rankings, the seedings have come out. Obviously, South Carolina is the number one team, and they have been all year in dominant fashion. They go on the road to Knoxville to face a scrappy, scrappy Tennessee squad out there, man. They fought for three quarters, but that depth wears you down after 40 minutes. South Carolina uses a big fourth quarter. And those bigs, the return of Camilla Cardoso, Ashlyn Watkins, she didn't start, but she played them starter minutes, and they may have saved the Gamecocks from an upset. But before we get into all that, make sure y'all hit that subscribe button for all the latest and the greatest. Join our memberships. We got that exclusive content coming daily, weekly, whenever you need it. Now, let's get into it. You are now locked into the Live with Brandon Blakeney podcast. Here is your host, Brandon Blakeney. So South Carolina took the win 66-55, to but I feel like this game was a lot closer than the scoreboard would lead you to believe. Now, this was a tough, I'm telling you, Tennessee opened up the game on a really big run in the first quarter. They were getting hustle points. They were causing turnovers. They were scrapping. They were the aggressive. They came out They came out more hungry. You know, Malaysia full while they hit a big three to give South Carolina the lead. And then Tennessee comes storming back behind Rakia Jackson in the second quarter, man. They were just making all types of shots. They were getting in rhythm, and they held South Carolina to just 10 points in the second quarter. South Carolina went cold, and they were lucky. It could have gotten a little uglier in the second. Tennessee went over four minutes without a bucket, and it was just a really stalled-out quarter for both teams. The third quarter, action pack. Blow for blow, punch for punch. This These two squads were at it like two heavyweight fighters scoring the basketball. It was just the most offense that we saw from either team. They're both highest scoring quarter was the third quarter where both teams were moving the basketball and players were making shots. This really came alive. They really came alive, man. And that big third quarter from the Gamecocks really sparked the fourth quarter where they stopped trading buckets and continued their scoring, but they shut Tennessee down, holding them to a tutty seven points in the fourth quarter, man. It just felt like Tennessee ran out of gas. Um, Aside from that fourth quarter, this was just a dogfight on both ends for both teams, man. And Tennessee actually had some size to compete with South Carolina. Um, You look at the stats, South Carolina 40% from the field held Tennessee to 32, uh, terrible three-point shooting night for both teams, and that was one thing I mentioned when I said that if Tennessee was going to try to pull off an upset, they would need South Carolina to have a bad shooting night, which they did. Unfortunately for Tennessee, they had a worse shooting night, shooting 11%, 11.8% from the three, bro. And then y'all mentioned we talk about South Carolina not having weaknesses, but the free throw conversation continues to come up. They shoot 50% from the field, leaving eight points at the line. It would have been a shame if that would have cost them. I'm just saying. But Tennessee just did not make enough shots in this game. They were chucking 65 shots. I'm saying they were chucking. Uh, but they just were not falling, man. Um, the energy at halftime was completely in Tennessee's favor. The crowd was rocking. And they, those bigs for South Carolina came out, dominated the glass, out-rebounding Tennessee, 52-44. to 44, You know what I'm saying? Uh, Raven Johnson in that backcourt, pushing the tempo, getting transition buckets, winded up with 17 assists as a group, five blocks. Now, the turnovers, man, they had a handful of turnovers in the first half. They cut down and started taking better care of, better care of the ball in the second half. But that first half, man, South Carolina was looking sloppy, and they were fouling a lot, too. Um, but, you know, Tennessee bailed them out. They stalled them out, man, with a bunch of missed shots. Looking at it. For Tennessee, man, it was the three-headed monster that they have. Shout out Jasmine Powell, who played really well in this game, man. Rebounds it well for her size at the guard position. You know what I'm saying? Made some big shots. Was getting busy off in her ISO. You know what I'm saying? Step back. 
get into the cup a little bit. You know, it was a uh, it was it was honestly, man. She she played a really good game. They got what they needed out of her. I was also impressed with Sarah Puckett, who played extremely tough, was playing bigger than she was down there trying to bang with Cardoso and Ashlyn Watkins. Man, she hit the floor a couple times, but fifteen points, five rebounds, valiant effort. And then Rakia Jackson, one of the best players in the nation, man, one of the most versatile Swiss Army knives on the offensive side. You will see nineteen points. She was out there shooting the three. Taking it to the hole off the dribble, hitting the mid range, and a couple blown assignments happened in that front court. And communication was a little bit off for South Carolina in this game at points. And Rakia Jackson was lighting them up, man. Uh, shout out to her. Definitely one of the best players in the SEC, and I think she has a bright future heading into the WNBA. But that front court of South Carolina, man, I told y'all Camila Cardoso came back with a vengeance. Ashlyn Watkins playing starter minutes with a double double. And I'm just saying, man, this team, this these two players really saved this team from being upset, man. Camila Cardoso in her return, 18 points, nine rebounds, three assists. She came up with some big buckets, especially late. She really closed this game out. I mean, just too much size, too much skill. I still think she needs a go-to move. I'm just saying. Uh, Tennessee did a really good job on her early, but you can only contain that beast for so long. She's just active on the glass, getting second-chance opportunities, man. Just too big, too physical, too skilled to do anything about it. She looked great in her return. It was like she never left. Uh, she leads the team in scoring and continues to do so tonight, man. She came out with a vengeance in that second half. And I think the guards did a really good job of getting her to basketball, man. I mean, you look at Raven Johnson, five assists, a whopping 15 rebounds. She led the team in assists and rebounds tonight, man. Like, Raven Johnson is that glue player that does everything for this team, runs the break, settles them down, gets them into their sets, rebounds the heck out of the basketball like we're seeing. Um, and then Ashlyn Watkins, you know, it was we were kind of talking about it in our last video if she would start or Chloe Kitts would start. Kitts obviously got the start, but Watkins played more minutes and was in this game a hefty bunch. And she delivered, man. You know, in her five starts, she's averaging a double-double. Or in her four, last four starts, she's averaging a double-double. She continues that with 14 points, 10 rebounds tonight. And she was really a difference maker. In the first half, she was a spark plug between her and Full Wiley, coming off the bench, getting big buckets, blocking shots, just being active on both ends, making things tough for Rakia Jackson. Shout out Watkins for taking on that matchup, man. And to be honest with y'all, she really had Rakia Jackson working, especially in that second half. She really kind of shut her down, um, her and Cardoso in that size. So front court stepping up, man, stopping them from getting that upset. You look at it, shout out to Sanaya Fagan as well, man. Seven points off the bench. She was looking really good in transition. Just another big body, skilled post. It's just too much depth. Now you're adding her into the mix as well. Fagan, Wick Kitts, Wick Cardoso, Wick Swatkins. Like, that's just too much size for any team to deal with. And Tennessee has some size now. Don't get me wrong. Like, Tamari Key big down there they've got size but they just did not have enough size to deal with south carolina man like that is just too much depth in that front court kids finished with six points four rebounds two assists um you know Bree hall had some moments as well finished with seven points two assists nine rebound or excuse me uh three rebounds she came up with some big baskets herself man when they really needed them in that stretch where they were struggling for offense especially starting the game um, but, hey, this was a team effort, another team effort, but we're seeing the potential with Watkins and Cardoso. These two can absolutely play next to each other, um, and it's not a problem. Tennessee tried to clog the lane. It didn't matter um, with Watkins' ability to get it off the dribble, hit the mid-range some, and, you know, get those floaters to fall. Like, she's just... She can get ISO one-on-one -on -one and blow by her defender, and she's so athletic and strong. Um, she can just finish through the contact, man. So, it, it really it, – it's, it's just not an issue. It's not an issue for her. Um, we're seeing, you know, that lineup produce, man. That bench, The bench really provided a second win. When Tessa Johnson, when Malaysia Full Wally, when those players came in off the bench – it really was just a jolt of energy for the South Carolina team, man. And that's what it is, the depth. 
There's just they're coming at you in waves, guys. Forty five straight regular season wins. I mean, they just come at you in waves. They didn't even need Tahina Pow Pow out there, one of their leading scorers. You know, very quiet game for her. And they still come away with a double-digit win. I mean, they wear you down. Tennessee was there for three quarters. Matched them blow for blow for three quarters. But that fourth quarter, they ran out of gas. And that's when South Carolina will turn it up and run it down your throat, pedal to the metal. It's the depth, man. It's just too many bodies on this team, too many quality players. You you better have at least eight or nine if you expect to play with South Carolina for four quarters. And nobody's been able to play with them for 40 minutes. Nobody. And all the tests that they've gotten, they're taking everybody's best shot. And it doesn't matter. It does not matter. And you could tell uh, Coach Staley was on they rumps, y'all. Like, she was visibly... Angry in a lot of those huddles, man. With it seemed like the energy, the effort, the communication, it was lacking. We did see some chinks in the armor, man. Tennessee had a lot of success for three quarters. Ashlyn Watkins, Camila Cardoso put the team on their back, and hey, that's all she wrote. That's all she wrote. Um, I think we did see some chinks in the armor. We saw some areas for improvement. Um, they looked vulnerable at times. South Carolina did, but. Me, personally, I never felt like they were going to lose this game. Um, just, you could tell at the end of the third and so at points at the end of the second quarter as well that Tennessee was running out of gas, and they just didn't have the bodies to compete with this freaking platoon system that Don Staley can throw out for South Carolina, man. Um, they continue to be the cream of the crop. They continue to prove that they are the number one team in the nation, a tier above everyone else. They're passing every test. They beat a scrappy, scrappy Tennessee squad that's fighting for their season right now. So you know they're going to leave it all on the court. South Carolina comes away with a big dub. So salute to them. They got Georgia, college game day coming to town. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be rocking down in Columbia. Should be a great game uh, for South Carolina. Expecting another double-digit win. Um, they're going to come out and do what they do, man. But this front court, if they're playing like this, I mean, you know, the shots were not falling like that tonight. But you got Ashlyn Watkins bringing all types of athleticism, energy. She's too good not to be on the floor. You're pairing her with Camila Cardoso, who's just cleaning up the glass. She's the cleaner. She, I'm sitting the cleaners through. She is the cleaner, y'all. And uh, just... Too much size, too much skill out there, man. They're running the break. I loved how Fagan was running the break tonight. They rewarded her. She got up and down the court. These South Carolina bigs can just blow past other bigs. If you do not get back and sprint back in transition, you're going to get scored on. And we continue to see that. But South Carolina continues to roll, man. I don't know if anybody's going to stop them. I'm telling you, it's not looking like, hey, man, it's not looking like nobody's up to the challenge right now, y'all. It doesn't feel like anyone's up for the challenge right now. South Carolina, even when they have a bad game, you got to have an A-plus game and hope they have a bad game for a chance to beat this squad. They had a pretty bad game this time around up until the fourth quarter. third, Up until the second half, I'll say. They had a pretty bad game, but, hey, it's not about how you start. It's about how you finish. And speaking of starting, man, Caitlin Clark breaking the all-time Division I women's basketball scoring record just a few minutes into their game against Michigan, man. She's out there lighting it up, hit a deep three-pointer, set it off. As I'm recording this, she's already got 31 points. And it's just the third quarter. She's lighting it up, and that's a whole lot of cold buckets, man. Shout-out to Caitlin Clark. Needless to what anybody says, you know, she's a true senior, four-year player, averaging over 30 points this year, breaks Kelsey Plum's record, who's been showing mad support for her, who's been thrilled. Iowa is spanking Michigan right now, and they're getting back on track after that loss to Nebraska, man. And I think ultimately, it's better this way. It's cool. They deserve it, um, that home crowd in Iowa. They they deserve to see her break that record at the crib, man. And it's nice to see that she got it out the way early. And it kind of takes pressure off now. Because for me personally, I don't know about y'all, I was kind of feeling like this was a distraction. Um, and I think we saw that in the Nebraska game. Now, 
Caitlin Clark has been playing it cool, rightfully so. You know, she's a cool customer. But everybody else seems very antsy about this record. So I think even Coach Lisa Bluter will be feeling very good, very relieved. She was heated last week, boy. That after that Nebraska game. Y'all heard that hot mic. She was going crazy. But um, it's nice to see the record, you know. Caitlin Clark has been dominating for years now, and she's just etched her name into the glory of college, women's college basketball. It's one of the greatest players ever. Um, don't know if she'll get a championship, man. I, you know, the South Carolina, Iowa, that would be an amazing championship game. But let's be real. They would need about 50 from Caitlin Clark because, man, that still might not get it done, y'all, because this South Carolina team, man. Uh, you know, that matchup, I would not have the bodies to match up with them. And shout out Hanny, Hannah Stolke, man. Um, had the big 40-plus point game. Like, they, we've seen, you know, Molly Davis. We've seen, you know, Iowa has a really good supporting cast. But South Carolina's a whole other beast, y'all. You know what I'm saying? But that's awesome to see Caitlin Clark get the record, doing big things, etching her name. Where do y'all rank her all time now? Like, where does she rank with the greatest of this game that we've seen these athletes coming through? Cause uh, she's she's in a she's in a league of her own right now, scoring the basketball. I'm just saying, and with all the WNBA talk, we don't know will she go, will she stay. You know, she come back for year five, and none of these records are being touched. I'm gonna just go ahead and tell you that right now. Uh, but amazing to see, man. We're witnessing history on all levels. So much greatness in this generation of athletes. Caitlin Clark adding to that big win for Iowa, or, you know, they're going to win. Yeah, the, the game isn't officially over as I'm recording this, but they up like 16. Um, so, shout out Caitlin Clark, you know what I'm saying? Um, maybe they get that, maybe maybe they advance and get into that one seed category. You know, they drop the one seeds, South Carolina, Ohio State were uh, two of the teams on there. Colorado and Stanford rounded out the one seed. So we'll see Iowa was a two seed with UCLA. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what, what happens with that, man. But shout out Caitlin Clark and shout out South Carolina staying undefeated. Caitlin Clark staying giving buckets. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about all the situation, though. Holler at your boy, man. Let me know what y'all are thinking about. That's a wrap for us. For all the latest and the greatest, join our memberships. We got that exclusive content coming daily, weekly, whenever you need it. Now, till next time, we out.